Okay, so I'm going to just uh, work through coding the bubble sort algorithm. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is just write down, uh, create an array of values or a list which I can then sort. So let's uh, try this. My list equals. And we will just sort um, letters. So let's just put some random letters in. And let's check that works. So print my list. Let's run that. Okay, so we've created a random, randomized order list, and let's just check what happens. So, uh, what I've done is I'm sorting uh, this list based on the characters. So we're just going to check how Python deals with characters. So let's have a just check. So we'll say print b greater than a print let's run that so b is greater than a true so here's the true cancel that for now print uh, a is greater than b false okay so as we might expect when we use a less or greater than comparator uh, between character strings, Python puts those strings into alphabetical order. So we can uh, just to just to have another example. If it was a word, print arvar ad vark is greater than zebra. That's false because uh, a comes before. Z, so let's check that. Aardvark comes before Z. Aardvark is less than Z. True. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to have to think about how we can um, create our, our, perform our bubble sort. So let's just perform this manually. So what we do for a bubble sort is we take our array. leave it character and we compare the first two values and if they're in the wrong order we swap them so B E that's the right order then we move to the next pair of values so E H they're in the right order then we go H A they're in the wrong order so we're gonna swap those round and then we carry on so H C they're in the wrong order we're gonna swap them Okay, so that's the steps we're going to try and replicate. So we compare this with this, swap if necessary, compare this if this, swap if necessary, this is this, swap if necessary, all the way to the end. And we're going to continue to do that. So once we've worked to the end, we're going to go back to the beginning and do the same procedure until every pair is in the right order and if every pair is in the right order then the whole list is in the right order okay then so what do we need to do well we need to uh, we can see we need to go position we're going to do a comparison between position one and position two two and three three and four four and five so we're going to need a loop that runs over the list uh, so we say for i in range. The range is going to be tied to the length of the list. So I'm going to put length list equals len my list. So I've stored that in a variable. And we can either say naught up to the length of the list or a shorthand, we can just give it a single value 
and it starts at naught and runs to the end of the list. So either would be fine. Let's define both just to um, be clear. So we're going to have, we're going to compare the ith value of the list to the ith plus one. So i, i plus one. So originally i is going to be zero. This is a zero element and we're going to be comparing it with element one. So let me just put in index to be clear, what naught, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is why I've decided to te uh, use letters in this so we don't get confused when we're talking about numbers or letters. Uh, so we're going to have um, so let's say first val equals my list i, second val equals my list i plus one. So to begin with, this is going to be naught and one. Then the next time we loop, this is going to be one and two three and four, five and six, and so on. If first val is greater than the second val, we're gonna swap those round, okay? So we're gonna say my list i is equal to the second val my list i plus one is equal to the first val. Okay, now what we might want to do is check this is gonna work. Okay, so, uh, so to check it works, we can then say, instead of running through the whole list, we can put a break in, so it's just going to do the first comparison, and then we're going to go print my list, print my list. So we're going to see what happens when we run through this loop, but we're just going to run the first one, so that's when i is naught, and we're going to see what happens. So let's run it. And we see what we've done is compared the elements 0 and 1, they're in the right order so we don't swap them. So what might be more useful is if we put these elements into the wrong order and then rerun the code just to check what happens. Okay, so here we've done that. So we started with a list which was EBH and in our comparison we've uh, changed that so it's now BE. So we swapped the first two elements and then we break uh, we broke out the loop. Okay, so let's set that back. And what we might want to do is just as we're sorting, while we're working out if our program works, is every time we run through this pair comparison, we're going to print out. Uh, we're going to print out what the result is. So I'm going to print out i, which is the num the index that we're comparing, and I'm going to print out my list. And then we can actually see how this works. And you can see that at this stage, all we're going to do is loop over from naught to uh, the end of the list once. Now what you can see is when we're comparing the pairs, we want to go compare 0 and 1, 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 5 and 4 and 5, 5 and 6, 6 and 7, 7 and 8. We actually want to stop on index 7. So not we're not gonna there's nothing to compare 8 to. So here I've got a bug in my code here. This should be length of list minus 1. Because we're only going to compare 0, 1, 1, 2, and we're going to stop when we reach the second to last list. 
uh, list element. Okay, so let's see how this runs. We're going to run through this once. Okay. So this was our initial list. After pass one, what we've done. is compared 0 and 1, they stay the same. Then we compare 1 and 2, they're the same. Then we compare 3 and 4, and you can see 3 and 4 are in the wrong order, so we swap those around. So A and H are in the wrong order. And then we're going to compare uh, four, 3 and 4, so H and C, they're in the wrong order, so they get swapped. Then we compare uh, H and D, they're in the wrong order so they get swaps. Then we compare H and I, they're in the right order so they stay. Then we compare I and G, they're in the wrong order so they get swapped. Uh, then we compare I and F, they're in the wrong order so they get swapped. Okay, so you can see it's quite, it's actually quite difficult to see how that's progressing. So just to show how that sort works, let's uh, go print i my list. Let's print a message. So let's go comparing i i plus one. Okay, so we're going to say what we're comparing and I'm going to put before and after. So before has five characters so they're aligned, I'm going to put an extra space here. Put a comma there. Okay, so now, just to make this clear, I've got a comparing, which ones I'm comparing, what the list was before and what the list is after. And then we'll just put an empty print to add a space. Okay. So comparing 0 and 1, comparing 1 and 2, comparing 3 and 4, so 3 and 4 is, oh no, let's go 2 and 3, so 0, 1, 2, comparing 2 and 3, H, A gets swapped. Okay, so you can see by uh, rewriting what we're printing out, we can make it clearer how this sort algorithm is working. Okay, so what we might want to do now is think about how we can what we do after we've performed one sweep of a search well we want to see um, we want to detect whether we made any swaps okay so because what the end criterion is we repeat this procedure until we've been through the entire list without having to swap the values so this is where, this is the code that we've done our swap. So I can just put a comma. If first value is greater than second value, pair is out of order swap. Okay. So what we can do is we can say, what we're going to do is have a flag so this is an indicator when we ran through the list whether we had to swap any elements so swapped a 
elements equals false. You can see that I've forgot my capital there. Canopy underlined it in red. That indicates that there, there might be a bug there or there's some problem that's going to happen when you run it. So swapped elements equals false. And anytime I do a swap, I'm going to set that flag to swapped elements equals true. Print compared all pairs. So here we've got, so after we've uh, gone through the list, I'm going to write compared all pairs, swap sum equals, and I'm going to say the value of this flag. Okay, so let's run this code now. So we've done the comparison again, and we see what happened was compared all pairs, swap sum is true. Now just to demonstrate what might happen once the list is sorted, so let's reorder this. C, D, E. G H I. So we're giving it a sorted list. What's going to happen if we try and run our algorithm? So let's run that. So you see now it's run for all the pairs, compared all pairs, swap sum equals false. Okay. So this is something we call a flag, and the flag is going to be used to tell us whether we've finished our swap. So we've got our flag in place, now we want to put an additional loop in place which is going to carry on performing that uh, loop over the pairs until we've looped over the pairs and found, uh, found that we didn't need to swap any elements. So, uh, so this is a loop but it's a loop that's going to have a condition. It's, we don't know how many uh, times we're going to have to run over it. So we can't say four, ten times complete this loop. We, we can use the other type of loop, which is a while loop. So we can say while we can say do we can say while Swapped elements equals true. So we want to continue every time we've had to run to swap elements. So So what I need to do is put all this code in this loop. Tools. And there's a handy command, which is press tab. If you press tab, it moves everything in, in uh, turn. If you go shift tab, it moves it back. So by pressing tab, I can indent all this code so it's so here to here, all right, <clears throat> so you can see I, I got a red line there and I was wondering what it was. So I've just run the code and you can see when I actually run it, I get an extra bit of um, information and what's happening is instead of setting a comparator so checking whether it was equals I was setting it to be equal so it's a quite a common mistake because in our mind is equals and set it equals to you can obviously you can it's easy lead on forget whether you're trying to compare the two values or set the value uh, so the, the problem I've got, the way I've written it, is I set up 
swapped elements to be false. This actually has to go within my loop. So before I do any pair comparisons, I say swapped elements is false. I then, if ever I have to swap a pair, I'm going to say it's true, and that means I'm going to have to repeat or do complete another sweep before I can check. Okay, so because I now set that in the loop, as I go into this loop, I need to have swapped elements set for true. So all that this does is say the first time you run it, assume that the list is out of order or was out of order. Okay, so swapped elements is true while swapped elements. So the first time it hits this command, it's going to carry on and try the sort. Then before we compare all our pairs, we're going to say, right, before I've compared it, we now set it to false. We run for all the pairs. If any of the pairs are out of order, we set it to true. And then we're going to need to do another sweep of our list. OK, so I'm going to just put a counter here. So count, I'm going to call it sweeps equals 0. I'm just going to print print before I do it. Starting sweep zero. And sorry, not zero. I'm going to use this counter. Starting sweep. So it's going to start. OK. So I think this is pretty much a finished code for performing with bubble sort. So let's see if it works. Ah, so remember I passed it the sorted list. So starting sweep naught, compared all squares, swaps rings, and we can just put here print sort finished. So let's let's compare this to our run this with our unsorted list and let's have a look what happened. You can see now this is where it starts. So start sweep naught and it's run through comparing all the uh, comparing all the pairs and it says compared all pairs swap some is is true. Starting sweep zero. So you can see the intention was to have this go starting sweep one, zero, then one, then two, so you can count the sweeps. So I've got a bug there to address. But let's just check. We see that eventually, so B and A were here, so this was out of order. Eventually, we've got our sorted list. Okay, so compared all pairs, swap sum is false. So when swap sum is false, it will run down here, swap sum is false, and it's going to escape from this while loop, and then print sort finished. Okay, so the bug that we spotted there, or I spotted, was I put count sweeps here, but I never incremented that counter. So after I've performed my sweep, count sweeps plus equals one. So that's increment this variable by one unit. So let's rerun that. Just see, so it's starting sweep three. So my counter starts at zero, so we go zero. One, two, three. And after that sweep, they're all in order. Okay, so this is my code to sort a list. You can see if it works with other types of lists. So my list equals, let's just do some numbers. So 103, 2. So I'll just type some random numbers in there. 
And because the core of the code, or the comparison, is using this uh, greater than comparison, the greater than comparison can be used with less characters or it can be used with numbers. Let's just see if this works. So here's my list. And what we are hoping is after this code is run, it will be in the right order. Okay. So let's scroll up. see it took quite a lot of sweep so here's our start sweep zero here it is in its original order and scrolling down to the bottom you see it took this is sweep eight so that means it had to perform it nine times I think we can see at the end of it these numbers are in the correct order so our algorithm worked so you can see something that <coughs> um, we could if you were demonstrating how this sort works it's fairly easy it's not necessarily so easy to sort of determine what that algorithm was just from looking at the code and it's really handy sometimes to sort of get a pencil and paper, write down what's happening, write down the stages, print out messages, uh, because uh, and print out messages that will help you understand what's happening. So you see when, if I just printed out uh, my list, my list, my list every loop, it doesn't actually give you much information so when you're trying to understand what's going on in your code uh, putting in print statements testing what the variable values are and what you see is at the end of it so it, those print statements were useful to work out what was going on but at the end of it maybe we don't need them anymore or maybe we don't need to print out absolutely everything so what might be useful here is we could uh, just print out the starting sweep and the counter and then we can say what the list looks like after that one so we cut down the number of uh, statements we're displaying oops let me put that down there so you can see still that's maybe too many what I actually wanted was just to print after every sweep so print my list so starting sweep one this is what it looked like starting sweep or well, starting sweep zero then we sweep one then sweep two sweep four sweep five sweep six and uh, so working out what is appropriate to print, what's useful to print is uh, handy when you're developing your code and then after it's developed, when it's written, how to tidy it up, what's appropriate. So generally, once we've got some sorting algorithm that works, we don't want any output from this code. We just say, here's my list, sort it, and then if we want to check it or print it, that's what we do. Okay then, so that's my demonstration of how I wrote or implemented the bubble sort algorithm. Uh, I'm sure if you or if someone else implements it, it's going to look slightly different. And uh, it's kind of like writing an essay or uh, there's a lot of choice in what you call your variables, how you arrange your code, whether you use flags or counters. And uh, although there's no right or wrong answers, there's certainly uh, you can certainly argue which is better in a particular situation. Okay, so um, so I'm going to tidy up this code and then put it to the website and also upload this video. If you've got any questions, just get in touch, and it would also be great if you have written your own version to upload that to share it.